Oh yeah, we got some ragged stuff here now. Stuff it! See these? And you go, shaplank. Oh my goodness, look at this. I'm done. It's over. I've done a lot of tree work over the years. Look at this freaking guy, Vartan. He's awesome, friends. He is, he's a great guy. Okay, friends, so we're at Vartan's place. We've got the fallen rig in here. I got my beautiful set of freaking date and cork boots. What I didn't realize, friends, and I've got some interesting information on these boots and the company, and uh, uh, things have changed there. But this is way back. We're going back to the Paris days where in the 70s, Paris, Perry, which I've got a little surprise for folks over the weekend here. Um, these were uh, a Timber Cruisers set of boots. I got them off him when I was 80 with his climbing gear, which is hanging in the bunker. The old manila rope and the cat's paw is what I actually started on. But this is actually not Dayton's design. They bought it off Paris. Paris boots. Check it out if you're interested. It's a really neat story. And Paris built freaking boots, let me tell you. Bearclaw would tell you about that. So I love these things and uh, I'm putting them on today because we got a little thing to get out here and this is the first job that I've been cutting, like cutting, cutting in a while. And this is why if you're new here and within the last couple of months and you haven't seen what I do and where my heart and passion is, today you will see that. We have been here a few times at Vartan's place. Um, that's Mount Benson right there. Uh, there was a job where Vartan wanted me to leave these high poles, remember friends? And I climbed and cut and then did a domino in here. show that on the quick little blurb so you remember. I've been here four or five times. Vartan's been great to us, allowing us to come and cut and test saws. Well, friends, he has got a beautiful, beautiful place here. Does anybody remember the big twin fur? I was right here. I talk, I talk. If you wanna skip, see ya, see ya later. But I talk and I remind people where, where we are and all that. So if you don't like it, just move along and go watch the trees cut down. So here's this freaking house, right here. And there was a monster fur. Remember that big split fur? Yeah, the water and the freaking limbs just sweep the gutter there, it was beautiful. But anyway, lots of work has happened here and Vartan now is creeping back a bit. He's got some big stinking trees. This one's kind of hooked over to the house a bit, all the foliage. Again, friends, right here, everything's, it's all nice size second growth, 110, 120 year old wood. Oh, oh. Uh, but he's just creeping back. He's just widening. We got eight or 10 to, to pull in here. So I thought what a, what a, a good opportunity to kind of just kind of get the body moving again and, and get on things. And I'm actually gonna run out of pure nostalgia, uh, the Walker's Big Boar kit right here. Vartan, say hi to everybody. Hey, hey, hey. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. hey. What do you got? Oh, you can't. what? Oh. I just heard you talking about it. You just, they found a whole them in Vanderhoop behind some wall in some shoe store. Like this is like, I bought them over at Dayton. That's right, yeah. Dayton. So do you know what's crazy, dude? Do you know what? It's just. <laughs> this is the pattern, dude. Yeah, there you go. This is the Paris pattern right here. Friends, you know how smart this guy was? He calls himself a basker. Re read the article in there. Thanks for bringing these out, Vartan. Yeah. Friends, this was a pattern by Paris. This is Paris. Well, there you go. But 
These were Dayton. Dayton right. bought the yep. rights to this pattern. Yeah. It's very interesting yeah. story. So this is amazing. You look like you wear these. I've worn them a bit, but they're tough breaking. Well, a little bit. These are just these are so nice. Yeah, those are comfortable. They got comfortable. these are all leather. Yeah, I, oh, there's yeah. no couch in like you got. What are they? Oh, yeah. oh, these are actually Keens, but they're like super comfy, man. They're, oh yeah, because they got all the padding in there yeah, and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. No, no. Yeah. This is this is straight up leather boot. Look at this, friends. Nail down. <gasps> look in there, dude. Those are cool, eh? yeah. They're wicked. What are you size fourteen? I think it's a 13. I can't believe this. Look at that right there. Oh, yeah. Look at the 12. 12, 12. One, two, e's. three, four, one, two, three, four, five. That is a 12 <laughs> triple E. This is this Pierre Paris. Pierre, right? Vancouver, yeah. British Columbia. That's Dude, cool. those are collectors. Yeah, yeah. Dude, straight up. Thanks for bringing those out. So hold on. So friends, look at this. Look at this. So these are Dayton, okay? This is, this is the Dayton boot. This is not Dayton's pattern. They bought, Dayton bought this pattern. From, from Paris. Oh, wow. Yes, in the 70s. Look at friends. They bought the pattern. I'm trying to get this square up for you here. Look at, see the pattern? Oh, that's so cool. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you why they did that. This is old school, friends. This comes back from 1907. Paris was in Vancouver on yeah. East Hastings. Yeah. Incredible story, friends. That was all timbered, eh? Anyway, if you think about this, your foot, all the bones on your foot, are here. They run down low and all the way back. Well, guess what? These people thought about this stuff. That bone on your foot lays right through here. It, they just, these guys were with it, man. And if you reach in here, you can barely feel anything. These were made probably by, by I wonder if those were made by Dayton. I wonder. Look at that, friends. Because Dayton bought Paris. Nonetheless, dude, you're awesome. Thanks for showing us those. And they are, they are nailed down construction. Oh, it's cool seeing them side by side. I Isn't that interesting? Know, yeah. yeah I love the history of all this stuff. Oh, man, I'm into it. Okay. Well, that was unexpected. Thank you, Bartan. I got to move the pickup down on the low side, friends, because them trees are coming out basically to the hump here. So I'm just going to move the pickup over there, get going. I know I'm all over with the camera. But I'm kind of excited, but I got to stay calm. I got to stay calm and use a nice smooth chain. Right now, you don't want no grabby nothing. You want to, we got good sized timber. You don't want no hungry freaking rakers if you're falling timber. It, it's not good. For limbing, it's nice. So you got to find that dance. You got to find that nice, nice dance. Uh, so I'm going to run the big, uh, the big bore, Donnie Walker big bore for now. And then I'm going to hit that Dalmar later and I might try my XPW. Those chains are a little more hungry. Ah, friends, good morning. What an interesting thing that was for my buddy Bartan to bring out those boots. I mean, you guys know I love boots and Nick's boots has been just phenomenal working with me. They're a neat company, man. I've learned a lot about them and vice versa. So friends, you've seen the first tree go down. Yesterday's video was me whacking that for, I just wanted to get in and share a tree cutting with you guys, gals, women, and children, and show you the, the, the progress we've made uh, healing. And um, we got a lot of content. We're gonna work our way through this job. And I'm gonna share some, some valuable information for people doing this. All right, so you can kind of see the setting there, friends. Right, he's he's back here. He's he's wiping out like not this big one that he's calling. He's keeping that. That's a beautiful big tree. He's keeping that, but from there over, he's wiping out about eight or eight or ten trees. So we'll get in there and do that now. Right, Donnie Walker saw. Next, right there. I kind of want to try a different saw. This is a lovely saw. The chain is beautiful. Friends, I'm going to tell you, EXL, EXL chain. So, friends, there's a reason why I walk around on a... On a... You got to get the proper wood cut up. Let's talk about it for a second. Let's talk about this for just a second, okay? Then I'll hand this back down to Vartan. Is this. 
I gotta set you guys up. The reason I went over to get the low wood, you'll see me cutting this tree down, okay? You will see me doing it. I didn't have enough bar. Even though I do at the hinge cut, see? I do here, just barely. That's 32 inches, but it's not 32 inches, friends. Look at that. But here, I can't see my freaking chain over there, nor here, and I started here. So that's, so that's why I come over, get over here, sight up over there, make sure I got wood. Now I know that side's done. Bring it back around, get set up. It's all about your lean. It's everything's about the lean, friends, is what you're gonna do to the stump. Does that make sense, friends? I'm doing these little tutorials because I never used to do any of this stuff really in the beginning. I just, I just didn't. So I think you guys could probably stay up here with me on this one. I'll just, uh, I'll work the camera. Um, Cause the tree was leaning hard. So if I didn't have the proper wood, I'd have probably dinged that little buggy down there. We're four feet from the buggy on foliage. Look at the foliage by the fire. There's a purpose for everything friends, okay? So I'm just gonna put you guys here. This is a good sized tree. I think this is the biggest one we're cutting today. So we're just gonna do this. And I'm just gonna, well, you, you guys know what I mean. I, I can't, you're not gonna see me for a minute because I'm gonna be over there cutting up. Do you want that lattice out of the way? Do you, do you want that lattice? Do you want that piece of lattice? I don't want you to break it. Good, I'm breaking it. So friends, you'll know, notice here, I come up long, like not short, not creating a Dutchman, but I'm actually coming up a bit long. Now, if I could not afford to change my direction by six or eight feet out in the lay, I would not have made the undercut a little deeper. I would have knocked it out. Does that make sense? See here, I'm not quite met up. I'm not short, I'm long. So I choose to make the cut, I change the direction by going a little deeper over on this close side to you guys. But if I could not do that out in my lay, if there was no room for that direction to change a little bit, I would have to bang out that undercut right there or make other cuts to keep that in there. Hope that makes sense. Okay, look at that, we're 
almost perfect. We got a teeny one inch Dutchman in there we gotta clean up. It's a big tree. It's a big tree. You guys still rolling? Good morning, friends. Quick interjection, I'll get you right back on the stump. Listen, just for one sec. I don't have to say these things. I don't have to come in here and say this stuff, but I am going to say this stuff because you folks have been watching me for a long time, and I know you know how I'm feeling on the stump. I know you do. Listen, I see some videos, people, other tree cutting, fallen videos, you know, and I notice they edit through their undercuts and they'll show the top or the bottom and then boom, boom, boom. And they're in the back cut. Well, I, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Okay. I, I'm not doing it because for one, tree cutters that come here learn nothing. They learn nothing because trust me, I'm going to show you me cleaning up Dutchman's and, and techniques to do those things. I, I, I've said it a thousand times. This is an educate educational channel, edutainment, cuckoo, right? We're going to have some fun. We're going to learn uh, one man's ways, me. There's all kinds of things you can pick up out there on YouTube. It is, it is saturated with information. But here we have good long form content. I do shorts as well. But when I'm doing these long, ten, uh, long form contents, there's going to be a story. You'll notice yesterday we cut the tree down. But then today I showed kind of driving in and doing that and this and that and showing them boots and that. This is a place of relaxation and storytelling. I love you. Back to the show. So friends, you'll notice that I, I kind of lengthened my cut over on this side right there where I'm cutting right now. I changed my direction slightly, but before I did that, instead of knocking out the wedge, I made sure that I could tweak the tree a little bit more to the left down there, which would put it actually closer to the structure. So I'm just cleaning out. We're going to throw the back cut in, and this should lay out very close to where I bucked that tree out there is what I'm shooting for. The, the last buck where the tree broke, the first one. Let's give it a go.
See that, friends? There's not enough bar. You, you don't have enough bar. You got to go get that low side, especially on a leaning tree. There's a system. The system is this. Over there, make sure you can see your bar. Go cut it up. Check it out. I knew there was nothing above. There was no hazards above me. It was clean. Not pulling anything from behind me. This saw needs a tuning now. I can feel it. It's starting to, it, it needs a tune. Bring this around and bring your cuts up. It starts running away. It's fur. It's a beautiful shot. Good looking stump. No problem. But I am going to trade out a different saw now. Hey Billy, can we go 16 on this? Back 